Red Film Radio, I'm Matt Micucci from the 73rd Venice Film Festival and this year we're the official online radio station of the festival. Very pleased to be joined by director Casper Collin, who has just, uh, who's uh, presenting his film I Called Him Morgan here at the festival and is just out of a press conference, so thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, glad to be here. So your film talks about Lee Morgan, a great jazz man who had, a, you know, a, it's kind of an infamous end to his great illustrious career. But what I'm interested in was what drew you to the character of Lee Morgan, to the person of Lee Morgan. Wow, you know, I'm a documentary filmmaker and, and it's always like a process. You, you're starting somewhere <laughs> and, and the starting point is very important. And I made a documentary before about Albert Eiler, uh, which is another American jazz musician. It took me seven years and it was taking place a little bit the same time and, and the territory in New York, you know, in the 60s, early 70s. So I was a little bit reluctant after this to make another jazz project, even if I love jazz so much. But then, in, uh, it was seven years ago, I was watching YouTube, <laughs> and then I saw this amazing clip with, with Lee Morgan, together with Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers. They were performing this tune by Bobby Timmons called That There, uh, and, and uh, it was from 1961, I think, a TV broadcast. Uh, I think it was a Japanese one. and. It was Lee Morgan's sound and the solo, in the solo there, and his really, his ability to communicate there. I was just listening to that solo over and over again. I was really moved by that. And from there, I just, wow, I really need to, to see or listen to more of Lee Morgan's music. But by that time, of course, I know about Sidewinder, but coming more from my experimental soul searching free jazz music for myself I played music myself earlier in different contexts more like experimental music the sidewinder was not really my music at that time so I was so happy when I found this uh, clip with Lee Morgan this this performer this that that solo he played there got me very interested in this guy and I realized that there was this searching artist under development that made among others this fantastic recording search for new land and developed all through the 60s and made this great music towards the end there. Uh, well, I mean, then there's also Helen Morgan as well. Uh, and that, that's that side of the story too, so you have to balance the two stories together for this film. Definitely. And that was the thing, you know, when, when I heard this, this fantastic communicator, this, this Lee Morgan that moved me, so I, I, I did some research and found some people, there was many people around that, that know Lee Morgan and used to play with him and I just started to meet them and quite immediately they started to talk about, about Helen. Uh, and as I think most jazz lovers or music lovers, they, they know about that Lee Morgan was shot by his wife or girlfriend, m most people thought it was, or a woman, and that was Helen. Uh, that's what you can read, really. Uh, and I didn't know, know anything more than that. But then those musicians started to talk about her in a very lovingly and passionately way. And uh, I realized that, that, I mean, wow, there was something else. Because they talked about her as also saving him from, because he had a terrible narcotic problem uh, during a big part of the, the 60s, uh, into the mid 60s. And then this woman, Helen, met him and started to nurse him, really, and, and brought him back to us, <laughs> really. And that's a fantastic thing, I think. And, and I thought that to really make a film about Lee, I think it also needed to be about her and the relationship and the love story they had. That fascinated me, me a lot because it, both of them loved this music and also, in a way, made this music possible, you know, because he helped, she helped him so much. And then you have this wonderful thing, which is a taped interview, uh, which has never really been heard before, right? Yeah, I've, I got in contact with this uh, great man in North Carolina, in Wilmington, called Larry Rennie Thomas, who had made this cassette recording with Helen Morgan, you know, because that's such a fascinating thing, you know, because when Lee Morgan was shot by Helen, all the people around them, they loved both of them, you know, they, because they were always together and they know what she meant to him. So it was like they, they at once lost two friends, you know, yeah. and one of them shot the other one. It's a terrible experience for them, really. Uh, so 
But Helen, Lee died directly, and Helen got to prison and then just disappeared. Everyone lost contact with her. And then it was this, she moved back to, to North Carolina, and this man, Larry Rennie Thomas, uh, down there, he was the teacher uh, for, for an evening course, and this woman went to this history course, and he realized who she was and kind of discovered this was actually the woman who shot Lee Morgan. He wanted to interview her, and she said, maybe. And then about seven years later, she, she f called him and said, you can come now. And then he came with his little cassette recorder, you know, this was in 1996 then, uh, and made this fantastic interview with her when she talks about all her life from her background when she has her first child when she's 13 and the other one when she's 14, and then traveled to New York to create a new life. Being Lee Morgan's manager, killing Lee Morgan. Literally picking him up off yeah, the picking gutter. Picking him up, definitely, and yeah. then ending up with, with shooting him and then her way back to, to North Carolina. And then suddenly the, uh, the interviews interrupt by a grandchildren walking into the room. And, and this guy who made this interview, he wanted to come back, but then she died just one month later. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a special story. But I really like to, that was a fascinating document and I love to work with those documents as a documentary filmmaker. So that was a perfect thing for this film, I think. Price is primary source material. Then you have contributions by artists. It's, it's really a fantastic documentary. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have to talk about it. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It was a great pleasure. I Called a Morgan. Great film. Check it out, thank especially you. if you're a jazz fan. And this is Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.